Are you able to draw a foundation and floor framing plans where you are? If you're in Texas or Florida where engineers do the slab on grade design, you might still be providing a slab plan that shows the contours, step downs, and other vital elements related to the slab. And if so, you can do four little things on your drawings that will make the tradespeople very happy. I began learning carpentry as a teenager, and that was a long time ago. Since then, I've formed up my share of footings, slabs, and set thousands of trusses. Or at least, I've supervised them. And when I became a building designer, half of my work came from working with builders directly, and two-thirds of the other half came from homeowners referred to me by those builders. It makes sense then that with that much building background, my target market was builders, especially high-end production builders. In that environment, most subcontractors, a plumber let's say, must work for several construction companies to stay busy. And when she and the builder are in the hot sun scratching their heads and trying to figure out where the toilet goes because the dimensions aren't adding up, I'm betting that the industry partner suggests the builder use me next time. Why? Because working from my foundation plan makes her life much easier. How? By investing a few minutes in providing some key dimensions that most designers don't. The same thing will happen when a homeowner asks a builder who to hire to design their house. Now think about someone or something you've referred that made your life or job easier. And when you do execute these four ideas, attribute your time to your, and your time card to marketing, not drafting, because what I'm about to share with you will make you the exception. I looked back at the plans that won Grand Arda recognition in this year's American Residential Design Awards. There were four winners, and only one of these four strategies was used, and by only one winner. Here are four simple techniques I use to be the exception and make laying things out in the field much easier for the crafts. Now, when a form carpenter is trying to square a portion of the house, or the whole house, they stretch a tape measure diagonally each way. You probably already knew that. And when I did it, I would measure one way and then measure the other way, make my adjustments, and then measure again and again. And I was walking back and forth, and so was my helper. A savvy carpenter pulls out their trusty construction master calculator and figures out what the diagonal is supposed to be in advance. It took a while, but I finally became savvy. So when I became an, a designer, I thought, how long does it take to do that when I'm preparing the plans? And with CAD, you don't even need a calculator. Not only will you save a number of steps taken in the field, but you might also make it possible to reassign an intelligent person who would typically be holding the dumb end of the tape. Now here's the second tip. On the slab and floor framing plans, show the interior dimensions to the outside of the slab or foundation wall. For example, you have an intermediate footing or beam, dimension it from the center of the beam or footing to the outside of the building. Don't count on the framer or form carpenter to notice that they have to hold the tape measure to the inside of the foundation wall or discover that they have to add the width of the exterior wall to the overall measurement. It's more efficient to hook the end of the tape measure than it is to butt it. And yes, you may have to change a setting in your software or edit the wall type. But think about all those referrals that come to those who are the exception, like you. The third idea, also on the slab foundation or floor framing plan, show plumbing fixtures and appliances as dashed items. Now, one of our four grand artists that I mentioned did this, but they stopped short of amazing. I show the adjacent plumbing wall and dimension it to the edge of the slab or the outside of the foundation wall. Yeah, in the case of raised floor systems, the rough plumbing is typically installed after the interior walls are framed. I've seen this scenario happen though. Focus on the joist in the way, not the plumber's solution. But if you can help avoid both, you're a hero. Help our trade partners avoid mistakes with just a few minutes of extra detail put into your set of plans. And besides, what if the plumber does want to install the rough plumbing when the floor trusses are set to avoid having to work in the crawl space later? Now, this last idea is used when it's crucial to dimension items placed repetitively like anchor bolts, footing pads, or vertical rebars. Normally, we dimension the distance from the corner of the building and then the space between each of the items. And don't stop doing that. We should also provide a progressive line of dimensions from the corner 
to each individual item so that the person doing the installation only has to stretch out the tape once. Now, not only is it faster and easier for them, but it also saves you time to an from answering questions and fixing mistakes when a person in the field tries to do the math themselves and gets it wrong. Also, remember to inform your contractors when you implement these new marketing strategies. The improvements may be so subtle that they don't notice at first. Okay, homeowners are a great source of referrals, but remember, they are only one of the many consumers of your work. There's nothing more satisfying for me than signing on a new builder client and learning that a subcontractor referred me. Not only because the builders are responsible for five out of six projects, but because I know I made someone's job easier. In the comments below, let me know other things that you do on your plans to be the exception. And thanks for watching this entire video and have a triumphant week.